This is The Rusted Willow and my name is Tammy. And today we are gonna just jump right into these DIYs. I got some really good ones for you. Okay, DIY number one. I picked up this blank wood sign at Joann's Fabrics. Um, it was like 70% off. I think I paid 13 or $14 for it, maybe less. I don't really remember. Um, anyway, I got a really good deal on it. I am making this for my daughter who loves to go fishing. I can't even see how much it was. I think it was like 49 or $39. Anyway, I got it super cheap and it stands up on its own. So she loves to bass fish. So I don't know anything about bass fishing. Um, I know they're green and so that's what we're gonna go with. Um, so I start off with moss chalk paint and I am just going to layer the paint on and give it some dimension and some shadows and just do the best I can because honestly I don't know anything about fish. So I give this one good coat of the moss chalk paint all over the front. Now the back I don't show in the stand but I am going to use my Waverly wax on the back and the stand to protect it um, and then I'm going to go over it with some polyacrylic to protect it from the elements just in case she wants to set it outside. So after I get this completely covered with the moss, I go back in with some celery to add some highlighting because the celery is a lot lighter than the moss color. And then I don't know if you can see, but I have several different greens set out. I have a gray green, a really bright green, um, and a really dark green and I use the celery, the moss, and I use my water bottle to just kind of blend them all together. And that bright green is so pretty. It's like a lime green. And those three bottles right there are Oops Paint that I picked up from Lowe's, which is not $1.25 anymore. I don't know if you guys have been out to Lowe's to get some paint, but they got smart and now everything's half off. So I have not been picking up any Miss Tint Oops paint lately um, because they raise their prices a lot. Um, okay, so then I go over the edge with the darkest green that I have because I put the highlighting around the edge and so I wanted to make sure that I got the edges good and sealed. And then I went to my Cricut and I cut out Gone Fishing and now the font that I used for this is called, I, I downloaded it from defont.com and it's called Fishing, hmm, what is it called? I think I put it up above. It's called Fishing something. Okay, I downloaded the font from defont.com and it is called Fishing Journey. There it is there's the font. So if you like this font, um, you can go there and download it for free. Okay. And the S is not upside down. That is literally how it is supposed to be with this font. And I thought it was super cute. So I cut this out with my Cricut. I did use the vinyl from Dollar Tree because when I'm cutting out large things, that vinyl works just fine. It's when you're cutting out small things that it doesn't do so well. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble with it wanting to stick to the board. Um, like this S gave me some trouble, but I did get it to stick. Um, you just got to roll it back and forth with your fingers and it will eventually stick on there. And I had to get my scraper out to help me get the letters burnished down. And it was a little bit too long to get this on your 24 inch mat. So I just uh, cut out the G by itself and it worked just fine and I placed it down at the end and see that end didn't want to stick either so here I am I'm just placing the G and I just kind of eyeball it just making sure that it looks like it's in the middle and today is a collaboration I am the co-host of the fourth Friday open challenge and today our theme is summer. Now, if you have not went over to Sarah, Sarah's channel at Jujubee DIY or Lisa's channel 
at our gray house, you need to make sure you make it over there and tell those ladies that Tammy sent you. I will have the playlist and their channels linked down below in my description box so you can jump over to their channels and check them out. They are the sweetest and I actually got to meet Lisa face to face in Texas not too long ago and we had a absolutely amazing time. It was so nice. Okay, so I was sent these no spray water slide, uh, this package from Koala. And I don't know if you've ever tried this before. I think it's a new product, but um, it is really nice guys. Now, a couple things that I noticed, a couple things that I noticed is the paper is a lot thicker than the other water slides that we've been using from another brand and um, you want to make sure that you get a picture that is completely filled in so i probably didn't pick the right kind of pictures i downloaded my pictures from cricut design space and they are a cut a print and cut file so i just printed them out and then i cut them out by hand which i actually should have cut them out on my cricut which i didn't even think about that till after i already had cut them out by hand um, duh, because they're a print and cut file, but anyway, that's besides the point. So after I cut these out, I just took these little pieces of board. Um, I've been shiplapping my laundry room, sitting room, TV room, and I sanded the edges down because I didn't want any rough edges. And then I went over it with the color sandstone and dusk. And then I decided I didn't like those colors because they didn't go well with the decals or the water slide decals. And so I went back over them with night sky and I love the night sky. Now, here's a tip for you. If you're going to use this water slide or I guess any water slide, you want to make sure that you use Mod Podge first. So I did not Mod Podge the seahorse and it kind of made a mess on me and it started to take up the paint when I put the water on there to put the water slide on the board so you can see like my fingerprints and where I dabbed the water off it kind of took the paint off so then I went back over it with the paintbrush and that just kind of made a mess because guess what it's wet from the water because it's a water slide decal so evidently I didn't have my crafting brain going that day, um, but I get smart and I'm like, wait a second, I'm not doing this again to these other two. So I'm gonna Mod Podge them real fast. So make sure that you Mod Podge them. Now, I think I mentioned before that this paper is a lot thicker than the normal water slide paper and it is white. So it's not as transparent um, as the other water slide paper. So you want to make sure that you get as close to the design as you can or get a design that doesn't have or will show a background. So I probably didn't pick the best designs. But anyway, I think they turned out super cute and it's just going to go on my tiered tray anyway. So here's the whale and they come off really nice. It is a lot thicker. So this water slide decal is a lot more forgiving than the other water slide decal. Um, and I mean, it was super easy to work with. I just wished I would have picked different pictures. I, I chose the watercolor, uh, seahorse and whale and jellyfish out of Cricut Design Space. I, I love the beach and so I love this coastal theme. So I'm just going over the seahorse to try to blend in the, I don't know, blend in the decal with the background and so I do the best I can. Um, I think it ends up turning out okay in the end, but um, I don't know. Since it was a water a watercolor design, I don't think it has to be perfect. So I do go over the other two designs and with the paintbrush just to kind of blend them in as well. But as you can see, like that just slides off perfectly. So I would encourage you guys to try this paper, but make sure you get a design that you don't have to cut the inside. Like you can see the tentacles hanging down on the jellyfish. 
if I would have put that on my Cricut, it probably would have cut all that out. And then I would have just been left with the tentacles. Now, I don't know how well that would have um, stayed down with this water slide because I didn't do very intricate designs. But after I get them all put on the little wood pieces, then I go ahead and embellish them with some jute string and some seashells. And the seashells I had from a hanging, mm, what do you call it, flower basket that was completely made out of seashells. I wasn't going to use it anywhere, so I took it apart, which is terrible of me, I know, because somebody spent hours stringing all these seashells into a plant hanger, but now I'm gonna be repurposing those seashells into other stuff, so I guess I'm not too terrible. <laughs> so now here is another sign, and it is all about summer, and I like the way this turned out. This also was a design from Cricut Design Space. Um, I didn't like that you couldn't see the words very well, but I wanted to try it on a bigger design just to see if it held up really well, and it did. It held up just fine. Now, I just kind of did a fussy cut around this design. I didn't cut it real close, and I didn't cut out the letters, but um, I think it turned out, I think it turned out cute. It's also for my tear tray. And it says like summer, hot, um, I don't know, everything to do with summer. <laughs> Pool, swim, it has all those summer words. So then I just take some of those beads from the Dollar Tree and I make a garland to go, well not garland really, more like a hanger to go on this sign. And I just used my crocodile and poke some holes in the top and then I just strung some beads and I left them natural. Just reminds me of the sand. I tied it onto this sign and it is ready to go. I think it turns out super cute. Now I did take some white paint and I touched up where crocodile um, poked the holes through the wood. And then I just kind of dry brush over it a little bit. And there you have it. All right, on to DIY number three, moving right along. Okay, now I still have a bunch of these mini books and I have more books and books and books and books. So I'm gonna have my husband cut me some more because um, Christmas is coming. Okay, and then I take this nautical mm, fabric. I don't know why my words have left me now. And I cut it down to uh, fit over these books. I take two navy books and one red book. And I love this fabric from Dollar Tree. It's super cute. I just make sure that the actual uh, anchors and I don't know what you call that north, east, south, west thing um, are the right side up because I don't want them upside down. So I turn that book and I cut it correctly and then I cut down the fabric and it cuts and tears very, very easily, which is nice. And then I use my Mod Podge to glue down the fabric. And I love having my Mod Podge in this little squirt bottle. It makes it so convenient. If you haven't done that yet, oh my gosh, you should do that. I stole this idea from Tammy over at Crafty Peep. I don't know that I stole it, but I borrowed it. <laughs> but I saw her using her Mod Podge like this, and I'm like, oh, I'm doing that. I think she has some white paint in one and Mod Podge in another, because those are the things that we use the most, which makes total sense but it's very, very handy. I love it. So after I Mod Podge the fabric onto the book, I Mod Podge it on the outside of the book as well so that it adheres very nicely and it will make the fabric stiff once it dries and then it will be easy to cut because we are gonna trim around the book and make it nice and neat. So I do the other two books in this rope material I don't know what you call that knot, a lark's knot, I think. Um, and it's super cute, I love it. I'm going to embellish these different ways, so just hang tight. I wanna to talk to you about Lisa and Sarah. Okay, Sarah over at Jujubee DIYs. I haven't met her personally. She is so nice and I, um, have done collaborations with her before so make sure you go over and visit her channel and then Lisa I got to meet her when I went to Canton not too long ago and oh my gosh 
I tell you, it was like we had an hour lunch, but we were there for hours. And we just talked like we'd been friends forever. It was so amazing. We had the most amazing time. And I love her, love her so much. So make sure you go over and visit Lisa at our gray house. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. All right, so here I am, and I am just trimming down the books around the edges, and I just take my little um, detail scissors to do that. And those, of course, are from Dollar Tree. I think they could be sharper, but they did the job, and that's all that matters. So I go around each little book and I trim the edges and then two of these books I'm gonna stack together now I decided oh and I made a little larks knot for the one blue and white book so I have one book by itself and then I have these two that I'm gonna stack together I'm actually restringing some of these uh, beads that came from Dollar Tree as well as the um, boat wheel and I am going to put them on the front of these two books and these are going to go on my tiered tray as well so i'm kind of making tiered tray decor but i also made the outdoor sign for my daughter i hope you're liking these uh diys you're gonna have to tell me down below in the comments which one you like the best but guys i think i don't know i think that gone fishing sign is probably my best. I think it's my favorite. It turned out so good. I love the font. I love the fish. I love the color. I mean, I don't know that the pictures do it justice, but um, hopefully, hopefully when you see it in the final reveal, you'll see what I'm talking about. But in person, it is just, it's so cute. I love it. I hope she's going to like it. Her birthday's not till September, so I haven't decided. Should I give it to her early, or should I hold on to it till her birthday? I don't know that I could keep it hidden that long. I might just have to go ahead and give it to her early. <laughs> All right, so after I restrung these beads on red and white string, I tied some white macrame cord around two of these books, and then I attached the little garland that I made. And I also unravel the bow to make the little, I don't know, strings stringy. <laughs> I don't know, just to give it a little bit more something, something. Now guys, don't forget to go over and visit Sarah at Jujube DIY and Lisa at Our Gray House. And I want to thank them so much for choosing me to be their co-host this month. I love them. And there's a picture of Lisa and I um, after lunch. It was such a pleasure to meet her. And I just love her dearly. I tell you what, she is the sweetest woman ever. All right, let's get into this final reveal. And I will have their channels as well as the playlist just listed down below in my description box. And there is my decor on my tiered tray. And see, it says swimming, hot, sunny. See, I think the seahorse turned out okay. It still looks... Um, what do you call it? Watercolored. I think everything turned out okay. And this was still kind of wet from Mod Podge because I did Mod Podge it over the top. And so it was still kind of wrinkled. But once it dried, it was not wrinkled any longer. And there is the gone fishing sign. So tell me what you think about that, guys. I didn't show it, but I did go around the edges with black and white just to kind of outline it and give it a little bit more dimension. And there's the summer sign. It looks super shiny. I did use the matte Mod Podge, so I don't know why it looks so shiny. <laughs> so let me know what you think about my fish. Oh my gosh, I love it. All right, guys, I want to thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope you have a great weekend. And if you like this video, here's some more that you might like as well. Bye.